Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to go through a live Excel spreadsheet, and we're going to produce the same example that we looked at in the first lesson. So I'm going to get started right away. If you remember, we were looking at a sample spreadsheet with three cities comparing products and services, and we did some formulas to uh, calculate different uh, results. So I'm going to start here in cell A2, and I'm going to be typing up the names of the cities, just like we saw in the first example. So we start with Toronto, which, by the way, I live pretty close to. I'm Canadian. New York, been there many times, love that city. London, never been, always wanted to go. Big Doctor Who fan, if for no other reason. Okay, products in cell B1. Okay, and services are going to put in cell C1. Just like so. I'm not a very good speller, so i got to watch what I'm doing here. So what we've got here are labels. Remember in the first lesson I talked about how labels automatically go to the left side of the cell? I've got a few more labels to put in down here. So below the three cities, I'm now in cell A5. I'm going to type total. And then I'm going to type average and highest, making sure I spell these things right, and lowest. So there we go. Um, if you wonder how I'm moving around the spreadsheet, I mean, maybe it's pretty obvious, but in case it's not, I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to just walk around one box to another. Okay, so that's all the labels that we need. Next, we're going to put in the values for the different cities. I'm going to go ahead and use the same numbers that I used on the first lesson. So Toronto, and these are just made up numbers, and the whole company's made up. I don't have three cities and three companies with amazing sales, at least not yet anyway, but that's always the goal, right? So 5243.26, that was the first number. Uh, and then I'm just going to type these out. I don't suppose I need to call them out as I type them. You can just see them on the screen here. And feel free to use your own numbers, although I think it's not a bad idea to use the ones I'm typing in, because that way... Um, you know you've got the same answers that I do when I get to doing the formulas. It's a good way to double check your work to make sure that it's doing what it should. Almost done. Got one more number to go here. And remember, these numbers, again, are just made up. Um, another little thing I can say about entering numbers into a spreadsheet. I'm not sure what kind of keyboard you're using, but I've got what's called an extended keyboard. So it has a separate little section with just the numeric keypad, kind of like you'd see on a calculator. And I'm telling you, if you're going to do a lot of work in a, in a spreadsheet or any kind of a program that involves numbers, definitely worth the money to have the extended keyboard. I really can't stand typing numbers out using the numbers at the very top above the letters. It just takes forever. And I don't know anybody who does Excel for a living that would use that kind of a keyboard. So a little tip for you there. All right, so we got our numbers in. So now let's do the formula. So here's our first formula. We want to add up the products for Toronto, New York, and London. If you remember from the first lesson, we go like this. Equals, that means I'm going to type a formula. Sum, that's the name of the formula that I want to use. I'm going to type my first bracket, and um, it's ready for the cell range that I'm going to put in. I'm not going to type that range in. Instead, I'm going to take my mouse here, and I'm going to highlight the cells that I want to use in my formula. Look what happens when I do that. It color codes the cells B2 to B4, and it actually types it in there for me. So I'm letting my mouse do the typing. Okay, I'm pretty much done the formula. I don't even have to put the other bracket in. If I just press enter now, it's going to assume the other bracket needs to go there. So there we go. And there's my formula. Okay, so that's the answer I get. If I double click the cell that I just typed the formula in, you can see that the complete formula comes back up, and you can see the cells that are highlighted that are involved in the formula. The other place you can always see it is up here in, um, in the formula bar. So I'm going to press enter again, and, and so there's my answer again. The next formula was average, and it works the same way. Equals average, and you can see there's a few formulas that come up. It, it kind of tries to guess what I want to do, so there's a few suggestions there. Uh, we're just going to stick with the basic average one for now. Uh, a bracket, and then I'm ready to start highlighting my cells again. So I'm going to highlight these three, and I'm going to press enter. And then for highest, I'm going to go equals max. Remember, that finds the highest number. And I can highlight these up here and press Enter. And then the last formula was a min for lowest. Equals min bracket. And I'm going to highlight these again. Now, at this point, just a little aside about the, the max and the min. It's probably hard to see a lot of value in those two formulas when you're just looking at three numbers. I mean, I can just look here and say, well, yeah, obviously New York is the highest number, so there's no surprise it, it comes out as the highest down here. And Toronto's the lowest, so I'm getting the Toronto number down here. Um, and you're probably right. With three numbers, 
you're not going to really do a max or a min. But you know, if you've got, say, you did a survey and you you know you wanted to find out different things over a thousand respondents well in a case like that rather than looking through a thousand numbers looking for a highest and lowest that's where formulas like that come in really handy okay so now we're going to do the same formulas for cells uh, c5 6 7 and 8 so these would be doing the same kind of uh, calculations on the services that are in column c but wait we're not actually going to type them up there's a much better way, a much faster way to get those formulas to work for us. What we're going to do instead is copy them over from, from column B. So here's how you do that. Highlight the formulas that you did. So there's the four of them there. When you highlight a range of cells like that, you'll always see this little black handle at the bottom of the, of the range that you've selected. Okay, that's called the cell's handle. And if you put your mouse over top of it, see how it becomes like a little black plus? Okay, that's basically you grabbing the handle. And that's where you have to grab it by when you want to drag and copy it to either to the right or down or whatever direction you want to go. So I'm going to copy these formulas now by putting my mouse over top of this little handle. I'm going to click my left mouse button and I'm going to drag it one box to the right. And you can see how it kind of shadows over and shows me that I've highlighted to the right. When I let go, boom, there's my formulas. Okay, Excel's really smart because not only did it copy the formulas over, but it knew to change the cell references. So this total here, I'll double click it and you can see, is for cells C2 to C4. Okay, so it knows that I'm trying to do the same calculations to the next column. And it does that for all of these here. So highest, lowest, and, and what have you. Okay, so that's uh, sort of an introduction to actually doing these things. Um, I still want to spend a bit of time in this lesson though talking about how to make your spreadsheet look a little bit better. So right now these these numbers and these words are all kind of crunched in together. So we can do a little bit to spread things out. I'm going to start by widening my columns a little bit. So if I put my mouse up here between column A and B, I can see how the mouse turns into this two-way arrow. I can click and drag that and, and widen it just by going like that. So that looks a lot better. I'm going to do the same for products. I'm just going to drag it out just a little bit to make it look a little bit better and for services. Okay. When you do that, notice especially the average calculation, it looks like a really big number, and that's because it's really precise. So it's rounding off, and we're getting like five decimal places there, and we don't really need that. In fact, all of these numbers, right now they're all um, you know, two decimals except for the average, but we're talking about money numbers here. So there's a way that we can format these so they look more like money. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to format these. So if you highlight the cells that you want to format, uh, make sure you come up here to this area up here. This is called the ribbon, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more in further lessons. But for now, it's basically the place where a lot of your uh, important tools and functions are for, for Excel as well as other programs. So make sure you're on the Home tab of, of the ribbon, because that's where we need to be to format these. So over in this area here, you'll see different symbols that deal with formatting your numbers. I'm going to click on the dollar sign one here, and you'll see that looks a lot better now. Now we're looking at actual numbers. Another thing that makes this spreadsheet look a lot better is if we shade in some of the titles going across and going down. So if I highlight these two here, products and services, I can change the color and give it a, a bit more of a highlight. So I'm going to give it sort of a, a light uh, grayish brown kind of color. That looks kind of nice. And I'm going to highlight these uh, labels over here, give it the same color. Okay, So that makes the numbers stand out even more and um, you know it, it makes it a little bit easier to read. Okay, another thing we can do is we can put lines into certain areas to sort of make things stand out. We know that these four or eight numbers here, these are all calculations based on these numbers here. So why don't we put a line separating the numbers from the calculations? Okay, so if I highlight, say, the, the London row, just B and C, I can come up here and I can do a lot of things to change the borders. So I'm going to go with a thick bottom border, and that puts a little bit of a separation. Okay. Some people like to put grid lines in. We can do that too. Maybe we'll just uh, take these numbers here. We'll put a grid around these to make them look a little bit more like they stand out from the calculations. So again, using the same tool up here, I can do all borders. When I do that though, it might reset. Yeah, it resets the one that I already did before. But I can just quickly go back in and say, no, I want you to be a thick bottom border. So it puts it back in like that. Okay, so you can play around with that and, and get different effects with the shading and the borders to make certain things stand out a bit more. When I look at this now, it's a lot easier to read than it was a few minutes ago when I just had numbers, everything crunched together. Okay, I want to do one more little trick with you before we let you go with this lesson. Supposing I had another city I meant to put in and I forgot to put it in. 
Well, Excel has a great little tool that you can use to insert rows or insert columns. So in this case, I want another city, say, between New York and London. So I'm going to click on the number 4 beside London and see what it does. It highlights the entire row. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to insert a row sort of in between these two where I can plug in another city, say Chicago. So with this London row highlighted, I can come up here. I'm still in the home area of the ribbon, and you'll see this thing called cells. Now, yours might look a little bit different. depends on how spread out you are. I've got my screen kind of scrunched in together so I can record it better. So these tools might be a little bit laid out differently on your screen. But on the home ribbon, you should see something here for cells. And if you click on that, you'll see there's a thing for insert, and watch what happens. Boom. Okay. Not only did it insert a, a row for me, but it kept the formatting consistent with what I already had. So it knew to put the shading in the, the city column and then to put the lines here for products and services. So I can just quickly add another city here. So I'm going to go do that. So Chicago. And I'm going to make up some numbers here. Like why don't we go with like 8, 5, 6, 4, 12. Okay. And I'm going to put in another number here. 4, 5, 7, 4.23. Okay, now the other cool thing that happened right now when we inserted that row, these formulas down here, they also updated. Okay, um, it knows that this new row is part of my formula. So now my formulas are going from B5, sorry, B2 to B5 rather than, you know, used to be B2 to B4. So it inserted that extra row into the formula and gave me a new title or a new total. Okay, and a new average. Now, I don't think my highest and lowest changed because Chicago didn't come out any higher or any lower than the other cities that were already there. But watch this. If I change this number, say I made a mistake and, oh, Chicago was meant to be 956412. Well, if I go 956412, watch what happens to the total. It's also going to jump up by another 1,000 to 32, whatever it was before. Okay, it also recalculates the average. So this is a really powerful feature about a spreadsheet. Once you've got formulas that are pointing to cells, if you change anything in these cells, these formulas will automatically recalculate where, you know, where they need to. Okay, and again, the, the highest and the lowest, it's still looking at that new Chicago number in the calculation, but in this case here, it didn't really need to, to make any kind of adjustment. It kept it the same, but it will change it if, if it's needed to. Okay, so that's another powerful feature. So that wraps up this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for the next lesson. I hope you come back. And uh, we're going to talk more about, um, about, I think it's charts coming up next. So that'll be exciting. Bye for now.